Hello. Welcome to my channel. My name is Sam and I'm just gonna start this video off um, apologizing for the low light situations. Um, I'm supposed to get hammered with snow and I wanted to film this review bike check um, for a really long time. Uh, and I just have to do it now. It's only 420-ish, nice. Um, but it's already getting dark, so I'm gonna try to make this video quick, but also not too quick. Um, so maybe before it's too late, I should turn on the light. So this is a Vanshee Rune V3. An amazing, amazing all-mountain killer. This bike is amazing. I had a Spitfire V2 and I loved it. The bike was fast, nimble, everything you could ask for on an aggressive-ish trail bike. The only problem was it had frame stiffness and strength issues, obviously. I ended up cracking that and um, running through the Banshee warranty process, which was not the best. Broke my frame. Uh, it was a weird time. We we're in the middle of the pandemic. Uh, Canada Day was coming up. The 4th of July was coming up. And it was just a not good time. On top of that, um, it was in between like model years still kind of. Uh, they had recently switched over to making the V3 from the V2 and that resulted in me not being able to get a V2 Spitfire as a replacement for completely free. I ended up having to pay, I think $500 for the, this frame and shock, which is a pretty good deal, basically just paying for the shock. And then I had to pay to have it like, swapped over and I had to get some other parts for it to get it to fit. So it ended up being upwards of $800, um, full disclosure. Now, it was totally worth it because I love this bike. I was able to upgrade from the Spitfire to the Rune because they actually recommended it. Um, so yeah, it's a lot more aggressive, it can handle a lot more stuff, and it's fast. Um, yeah, so I think I'm gonna get into the parts that I have on this and a little bit of a review. Uh, I got it in August maybe, and then I hurt myself on the 4th of October. So I really didn't get much riding time on this, but I can kind of uh, give you guys an idea of what I run and uh, how the bike feels. So just, I'm gonna start here and move my way back. The front is, uh, it's actually a 28 hole wheel. So it's not the strongest, but it's light. Um, it's a race face um, effect, I believe. It came on the Spitfire. It was a complete build from Jensen. So there's some parts from that on there. Um, and that has a Maxxis DHF, um, I don't know how what casing it is, but it, it's a good tire, um, set up tubeless with stands, um, valves, and everything else's stands in there. Um, this does need to be retaped. Uh, the rim tape did get slashed at some point, so it's, um, it's running pretty low right now. Moving on to the forks, uh, these are actually RockShox Pikes. Um, this is a... I think 2017 Pike, uh, could be an 18 or 16. I don't really remember as much about my bike. Wow, should have been more prepared. But this is a RockShox Pike. Um, it has the maximum amount of travel you can get out of a bike, and that is 160 millimeters. Um, that is the minimum amount of front travel you can have on this frame. Most people run around 170, all the way up to, uh, I think 180 to 200 uh, on downhill forks. Um, I love these forks. They're really light and they're, they handle everything I've put them through. I'll definitely need to upgrade in the future, but right now they handle everything I need them to. Um, and I, I'm much more like those huck to flats at the bike park. Um, now on there, I have a monkey nuts fender with my pine hill sticker. Go check out our trail forks. Um, and that's about it. That's a cheap fender I got. And it's just been on this fork since I got the bike in 2019 or the forks in 2019, basically. Oh man, look at the vape niche. Um, moving up to here, uh, this is a race face effect stem, 35 uh, millimeter clamp. And I have some pretty gnarly bars on this bike. Uh, these are race face Atlas um, 35 diameter, 35 rise um, bars. I believe they have a five degree back sweep and I have them cut down to 780. Um, which is the minimum you can cut these down to. Uh, these came as eight tens 
extremely wide, wider than Keegan's uncut 800s that he rides. Um, you'll notice in the edit that my, um, they are, they're building a house, so. You'll notice in the edit that I have a lot of stuff on the left-hand side. Um, I have a RockShox, RockShox reverb, which we'll get into, but um, it's mounted on the right-hand side just because there's, there's a shortage of housings. Um, when I rebuilt the bike and I couldn't get one long enough to reach on the left side like it was normally. So that's just how it is now. I probably will either get a new drop or change something soon enough. Um, sticking to the bars, I have SLXs still. I have SLXs. So um, Shimano SLX, great budget brakes. Uh, they just require a little bit of maintenance. Um, my front brakes pull all the way to the bar, um, but that's okay. Uh, the bike ha is in some disrepair since I crashed. And moving down to here, this is a GX shifter. Um, and I just kind of realized I've replaced a lot of parts from my original build, but this is a GX shifter. It shifts great. It's simple. I like the 12 speed, but I don't need it. So realistically, I could be running a wide range eight speed and be fine. Um, these are Ergon downhill grips. I don't really know like the exact code. They're Ergons um, with some Shadow Conspiracy CNC bar ends. I'm going to swap these out because they put a nice little uh, bruise in my um, quadricep. No, my quadricep, is that the right word? Yeah, my quadricep, my quads. My thick, dummy thick thighs, my thigh, uh, when I crashed uh, the first time. So these are gonna get replaced, but they're really cool. And I think I might get a pair of uh, different bar ends from Sabrosa or Shadow, some Bumex uh, stuff. Um, moving down the frame, I have a specialized Z cage. I believe that's what it is. Um, composite, it's not carbon. Um, I did break this on the Spitfire, but I welded it back together with zip ties. So right now it's okay. It's a little broken still, but it works. Um, it, this has a Fox. I don't really know anything about my bike anymore. Um, yeah, this is a Fox X2 shock. Um, it came with the frame and it is amazing. I like it so much more than my Rock Shock shock that I had on the Spitfire. It feels so much better. It doesn't leak air. It, it's, it's super reliable and it, I just can't say enough good things about it. I really, really like Fox um, suspension. Um, moving down to the cranks, they're GX cranks. Uh, super solid, a little bit of flex, but you know, I'm not too heavy, so it's okay. Um, and some Anvil Tilt Pedals. Uh, I ended up buying these on a whim. They were about $100, and they are amazing pedals that you really don't hear about too often. Um, they have great feel um, with my Vans. I, I tend to ride Vans half cabs most of the time, and uh, I like them over 510s. Um, but yeah, it's just a good setup overall um, in the grip department. Uh, moving down to the back, uh, I have a custom Hope Stands wheel. Uh, it's a Hope Pro 4 hub um, with a stands, um, stand, it has a stands flow Mark III rim on it um, with a Schwalbe hand stamp tire, uh, which is really, really, really fast rolling, but I need something a little bit gnarlier for park um, or not even park, just mud. Back to the back of the drivetrain. I do not have a GX anymore because I tweaked it and it broke. Um, it became unrideable. So now I have an NX derailleur with the GX cassette, original GX cassette, original GX cassette, chain, <laughs> with the original GX chain. Um, yeah. I think it's gonna be getting too dark. Let me check the footage. So I hope uh, the white background helps because we'll try to finish this off and then I can do maybe the review inside. Um, so yeah, it has the original GX components except for the um, derailleur, which is amazing. Almost two years on it and everything just feels amazing. Um, it does have a beaver, is it? A, a beaver tail um, bash guard. It's a composite bash guard. Uh, it was $20 on Chain Reaction. Um, and if you can get one, I really recommend it. Uh, they help a little bit. I mean, I've never, I don't think hit on this bike at least. I've never hit the bottom bracket's not as low. 
Um, but it, it's cool. And if you want to learn log slides or something, it's always good to protect your chain ring and chain. Um, oh yeah, and it has an SDG Falcon seat. Uh, an amazing seat, pretty simple. You know, I like the, um, the way this whole bike looks. It's very black and it's, it just, it's an understated seat and I'm starting to like it a lot more than I used to. I wanted a different seat, but just for looks, this thing functions amazing and uh, I'm gonna stick with it. Um, and then the reverb. <laughs> uh, I didn't really mind having a reverb. Everybody said they're pretty horrible. And I didn't know that until recently when I went to go press it and it didn't move. Not saying it's a horrible product, but um, it needs to be fixed. And I don't know if I want to fix it. I might just get a cheaper um, dropper or something more simple that's just wire driven that I can just have forever. Because um, after this year, I got to the point where I just want to ride my bike. I do not want to have to spend thousands of dollars to be constantly riding. Um, but that's just how it goes sometimes. Um, so I think for the review part, um, I will head inside and I'll record that because it's really cold and I'm shivering and it's going to be too dark to have decent footage. Um, so let's uh, move inside. All right, so it's a week later. Um, I ended up putting the bike check video on the back burner because I felt like it'd be uh, better use of my time to use stuff like uh, snow day videos when there was snow and everything. We still got hammered. We got about three feet, but you know that because you saw my past video after editing that. As I apologize, I really didn't know or remember as much about my bike. I didn't sound as knowledgeable as I have in the past. And it's just because kind of lately I've just been riding and not worrying about what my bike has. And it's been a lot better. Um, makes you, I don't know, I just appreciate what I have a little bit more than I think I did. So I'm not researching parts like crazy. Um, so yeah, uh, I will have a parts list in the description. I'm kind of writing that up right now and there's a lot of stuff. So I might miss something, but I have packages to almost everything. So <clears throat> try to get that for you guys so if you want to do something that I have on my build um, we can do that so um let's get right into the riding review aspect even though I won't ride and I can't really ride um I'm gonna talk about how it rides and um, if you should get the bike so both of the Bacons have 29er um, longer travel enduro bikes and with my Spitfire it's a little bit harder to keep up with them in some trail conditions um, at the bike park, I would be fine on, like, flow trails, just, you don't, you don't break it, it felt like a BMX bike, it was amazing, and that was one thing I really liked about the Spitfire, and I was worried I was going to lose with the Rune, um, that BMX feel, but also it just felt slow in a lot of technical stuff, and anything chunkier, it just got really sketchy, um, and that is somewhat of an attribute that you can put towards it being 27 and a half inch rather than 29, um, but with the Rune, I lost all that. There was no, that's a good thing. Um, there was no sketchiness in tech. Um, it was still just as flicky as a BMX bike, but it was more confident in the air, confident on the ground, confident everywhere. Um, overall, it is a better bike. I know it's a Rune and everything, but uh, it, you don't lose that BMX feel if you want that BMX feel or the dirt jump feel or the jib feel. You don't lose that with the Rune, and that is amazing. Um, I was worried I was going to lose that. For all riding, the Rune is an ultimate, all-terrain, all-mountain, whatever you want to say, bike. It, you can handle your local trails where you have to pedal a little bit. Um, it pedals pretty great for a 160 rear travel bike on a downhill shock. Um, but then when, as soon as you point it downhill, it feels like a downhill bike. It's confident. It's composed. It just feels amazing. Um, and that was something that that amazing feel was missing on the Spitfire. There was there were times when on Spitfire, I was like, oh my god. Um, or they were running into certain jumps. Jumps at Oneana, it's a tech section, then a jump. It would be so much sketchier on the Spitfire than the Rune. And uh, I really enjoyed the I really enjoy the Rune for that reason. Um, the Rune feels significantly stiffer, um, 
with the Spitfire, I actually used to be able to flex the frame and like the crank and everything. And on the Rune, there's none of that. Well, I mean, crank flex isn't going to change. I didn't get new cranks, but uh, I could flex the frame and like visually see it. You can't do that on the Rune. It's a lot stiffer and that translates into the trail ride, but it's not too stiff. It's a really good feel. Now on uh, jumps and everything, it's super agile still and it feels really balanced. Um, it doesn't, some bikes sometimes they don't feel balanced in the air. This bike feels perfect. Um, the seating position where you are, where you're standing when you're out of the saddle, it just feels perfect. So when it jumps, it feels great for being an enduro bike. Um, and I really recommend it to anybody that wants to jib or do like jumps, but also park and like bigger park jumps and stuff like that. Like, and you want to be able to hit drops and it feels a little better than a lower travel, like 140 bike that you would choose for jibs before. Now, is it worth it? And realistically, in my situation, it was worth every penny, but I didn't do it or the way I did it doesn't really exist anymore. So I bought a 2017 Spitfire that was complete from Jensen with 2018 parts. Um, and it was on super sale. So I got it for like $2,500. Now that is how much a frame costs from Banshee. So if you were to buy the frame directly from Banshee and then all the components, it'd be a $6,000 plus bike, which if you're looking for a boutique brand, a bike that you won't see again, odds are Banshee's for you. Um, but if you're just looking for a workhorse, um, there are a lot more. There are a lot of brands out there that do just the exact same thing. Um, so yeah, if you can get a frame for cheaper or a build kit for cheaper or any of that, I recommend it a thousand times, yes. But I keep dropping stuff. But if you're paying full price for everything, you have no help, you have no sponsors, you have no parts and you're building up a bike, unless you're looking for that really special bike um, I don't recommend it, but ultimately the decision is yours. And after me explaining how it rides, I hope that kind of helps you because it is a fantastic riding bike. And realistically, I think any bike that you have and you're used to will ride fantastic, but I just like the way it is. Um, I like the uniqueness of the bike. No, you'll never see another Banshee Ruin, never see another Banshee Spitfire around. And, um, it's pretty cool. So yeah, end of story. Um, if you aren't worried about price, get one. If you are worried about price, there's plenty of other complete bikes that you can get and build up and do whatever like I did where you get a complete and then you slowly throw better parts on it. I mean, I'm not saying I had bad parts. You get something and then you could always upgrade in the future. So uh, yeah, this is the Spitfire frame, but uh, I appreciate all of you for watching and uh if you enjoyed this video you found it helpful make sure to share it and like it and subscribe maybe i'd appreciate that um yeah so we say goodbye goodbye